Keeping track of your personal budgeting or your freelance expenses can be very tricky. For years, I just threw these into one of these and then had a horrific weekend with one of these. <laughs> That's such a bad line. Enter Notion. In today's step-by-step -step tutorial, I'll take you through the basics of building your very own version of my finance tracker that will make managing your money less complicated. Welcome back to the channel. If you are new here, however, I'm Simon, and on Better Creating, I'm trying to simplify productivity and creative life. So you might want, before you watch this video, to go and take a tour of my full Notion financial tracker template that this is based on uh, in my previous video. Uh, it's linked above and below, and then come back here for more. You can also download the full template via the link in the description if you'd rather just do that and start using it. In this build video, I'm gonna show you step-by-step -step how to build the following. Video one will build the main system databases and the financial archive view. That includes an income database where you can log your income, the expenses database where you can log and calculate all outgoings. Finally, a balance sheet database which calculates the difference between the two as well as a couple of other cool things. We'll finally work out how to connect those databases together using roll-ups. In the second video of this series, I'll show you the really exciting bit, the dashboard views, how you filter those, and a really clever way to generate regular expenses and income using template buttons in this system. Wow, that's a lot to do, so let's get started. There are chapter markers below. Let's dive into the build. So the first thing you need is a clean page, my financial tracker. We're gonna do empty with icons rather than a table because I want to insert various tables into the page. Uh, I'm gonna to go to the top right and we're gonna make it full width. Uh, here you'll see there's an icon we can change the icon flying money tree and you can add a cover if you want Why not? I'm going to create the income database. So we're going to do forward slash table I want to do a table in line So the name we're going to change to um, description We're going to change tags to month because I want to do this by month. Now you could do this by a date range if you wanted to keep it really searchable, but I'm using tags because I think it's really simple and effective as a way of sorting a financial year tab. This will be useful later when you want to search your archive uh, and we'll make that also a select. Turn the tag that's month into uh, a select as well. The financial year actually starts in April in Britain, but I'm gonna do it uh, from the start of the year. So put in Jan, or we can click on it, go to configure options and just whack some in. There we go. Financial year, I'm just gonna put in this year. Why not put a second one in? I quite like these to be all gray. Obviously you can just do it each year. Then we're gonna want an amount of the income. So let's just make that a number column. Uh, you're going to then want a, to set the currency for this. To do that, hover over it, click on the little numbers here, and set it to your currency. Mine is pounds, but a lot of the viewers uh, use the dollar, so I'm gonna make it dollars. We're gonna want an income type. Uh, I'm gonna make that not, uh, select as well. Salary, um, or it might be better creating. Uh, you're also going to want a client or company. So I've got description, which might be the project or the specific job that it's referenced. Um, but I'm also uh, going to create a list of clients and companies, which then mean I can link to them later on. Now, if you wanted to make this a, a linked database, you could turn this into a relation by going in here and selecting, let's say you have a database of clients, you could easily link it to that. Or if you want to keep it simple, you could just make it a multi-select depending on how many clients or a select. The reason these are really useful is they allow you to create board views later on, which you can then search by client and company or income type, so you can have filtered views of your income. Pretty cool. Let's actually call this income, we haven't done that. I might wanna link it to my wider system, so I can go into here and call this related project, so the income is related to projects in my wider system. Go here, go to relation, you can then select a database and I could do projects and my projects, it could be linked to that. The next thing we wanna do is make sure that we're sorting this by the financial year and by the month. So I'm just gonna drop in my financial years as examples order. So the first sort you're gonna do is click on financial year. In fact, I'm gonna bring that to the front. 
and the month because those are the references that will be most used. I'm going to click on financial year. I'm going to go to sort ascending and you'll see that they are then sorted in the order of the financial year they're a part of. And then we want a second sort, which we can add sort ascending in month. Uh, again, means that this will be sorted by month uh, in the order that these are put into the system. So for example, if I move Feb to the top, you'll see that that's then at the top. If I go back in and adjust it to where it should be, that all stays in the right order. Well, that's all pretty simple stuff, but it will get a lot more exciting later on when we start to link it to the expenses and the kind of dashboard view that we, this will be reported on. Next, forward slash table. We're gonna do a table in line. You guessed it, expenses. Uh, you could call it expenditure if you want, whatever you like. Again, change this to description. I'm gonna change this to the month and turn it into a select and we do the same with this. I think it's really important here that you match the colors in the expense database to the ones in the income database, so it's much easier to follow it uh, when you're viewing it as a whole. The next one I put in is expense type. Um, you don't absolutely have to do this, but it does mean again that you can create a board view to just look at your bills, subscriptions, travel, whatever you want to do. Particularly if you do self-employment stuff as a freelancer, it's really helpful. I'm going to make it a select uh, and I could put a few things in. For example, travel, subs, house bills. I can claim in the UK a percentage of my house bills as a freelancer. The next one we're gonna add in, of course, is the financial year, because we almost forgot to do that. Exactly the same as the one before. So that was a select, and we put in the years. You get the idea, and again, I like to put the financial year and the month before the description. You're gonna wanna put in the amount. I'm doing this in a really strange order, but you get the idea. Put the amount in, again, turn it into a number, click on the number block and decide on your currency. So we've got a lining up here, you see, months, descriptions, amounts. My next one is actually gonna be whether this is a fixed or variable uh, expense. So that means things that are constant, which means you can just automatically populate each month, or whether they're variable individual expenses. That is gonna be a select, fixed, Variable. And next, there's going to be a series of columns which will involve formulas that do all the kind of clever calculating of things against expenses. We're going to do this as a copy and paste formula. So I'm going to list the actual formulas uh, down in the description so that you can copy them. But first of all, let's just put all the columns in. So the next column is going to be set budget. Simply going to be a number. We set the currency set percentage claim. So this is for us to set how much of the entire expense that we've had we might want to claim uh, against taxes if you want to do that with this system. Now that is going to be a number as well, but we're going to set this as a percentage. You see there, percent. So we're going to put that in. That will be used for calculation later. Next column, final expense claim. This one's going to be a formula, but we're not going to put in the formula just yet. Then we're gonna do calculated percent claimed. That is also going to be a formula. But on the end, we're gonna do a files column called receipts. If you wanted to put images of your receipts in there. Now, a little disclaimer on this, if you are using Notion, you have to be comfortable with the information that you lay out in this system. So do your own research on the security around Notion. If you're comfortable with it, then absolutely fill your boots. Uh, but I just want to give you the tools uh, so you can make your own decisions as to whether and how you're going to use this system. There are two more formulas that we need to add. Planned expenses. Make sure you're typing these in exactly as I do because when I give you the formulas to uh, paste in, in a certain order in a moment, make sure that it matches because it means that spaces, capital letters, all of that counts for the formula to line up with what you've titled your columns. We're gonna call it planned expenses, that's also gonna be a formula. And then finally, we're going to do status. This one is gonna be formula. If I just move these over, so we set an expense amount that we actually pay, we set a budget for that, and how that lines up. So then that will calculate what we planned against what the, the actual was and give it a status. So this will report on those saying on budget, overspent or enter an amount. We'll then also have final expense claim. So if I put a percentage claim in here, 
I'll then calculate the percentage of the amount that we're claiming, if we're gonna do that, for example, for tax, and it will give us a final expense claim. So this is all reports on the same system. Go into the description, you'll see I've listed four formulas in order, and it's really important that you put them in in the right order because some of the later ones reference the first ones. So you're just gonna take it, copy it. This one is for calculated percent, percent claimed. Click on the box, type it in. If it stays blue, it's right. But you could also, if it's not working, look at how it works and in this place, you can insert your own if you, type, if you want to type them differently. And click done, that's that one. Uh, so this is the final expense claim. Type that in, great, done. So for example, if I say it's 10 pounds for this travel and I'm gonna claim 50% of it, it calculates it. How good is that? We should probably with this click on the numbers and format it so that it stays the same. Yeah, percentage claim. Then we're gonna want planned expenses. So we're gonna put that in. This just means that when you report on it, you will be able to see what you've actually planned for in expensive expenses and stuff that wasn't planned for. So if it's not budgeted for, it isn't listed in planned. If it is budgeted for, it was planned. Finally, we want a status as to whether we're on track or not. So we're gonna copy this in there, again, in the description. And this simply says, if it's planned expenses are greater or equal to the amount, then you're on budget. Planned expenses are smaller than the amount than you've overspent, otherwise enter an amount. Let's just show you what that means. Set a budget, nine pounds, I spent 10, overspend. Nothing in there, enter an amount. If the budget is 11, it's on budget and if the budget is 10 it's on budget that is now your expense system working if you have trouble with this again go back to the descriptions check them make sure that everything is correct and everything lines up with the description you've put in the column title to the bracketed uh, parentheses nice word of what's there maybe we just call this view system and then it just means that um, it's where all your programming goes, yeah? So the view is called system. But then the default view we can just call um, archive. And later on I'll show you how this all fits into the wider system. We're actually gonna do the same on this one. So we'll call this table view, click on the dots, income archive. Again, with whatever board view you add, it needs to be sorted. So we can go to financial year, we want to sort ascending month, ascending so it goes year then month and in your system view you might want to do the same do the same in income in my system view we've got our income and expense uh, tables pretty much in place now for the exciting bit we're going to create the balance reports so we're going to use roll-ups calculating your income against your expenditure make sure to hit the like button if you find this stuff valuable it goes a long way to support the channel let's dive in Click on your title, return, so you've got a space. I'm gonna do forward slash toggle. We're going to insert all of this into it. So I'm gonna call this the system view, or you could call it your historic view, whatever you wanna call it. There it is. You're gonna take both of these and we're gonna lift them and place them into there. After this section, we can then create our dashboard that we actually run the system from. Make sure to subscribe as the dashboard and budget item generator builds are in the next video. First of all though, open up your toggle and below it, we're gonna return again and we're gonna put in here forward slash table. This one we're going to call balance. We're gonna make the main title the year. We're gonna change this to a roll up. So you go down and see this little magnifying glass symbol because it looks into other databases. That's how you should think of a roll up. And we're gonna call this one total income. We're gonna do another roll up, total expenditure. I'm gonna call it total outgoings. Then we're gonna want a formula. We'll build all this in a moment. And this one is going to be gross yearly profit or profit loss. We're gonna do another formula and that one is gonna to be total claimed expenses. And another formula and this one is going to be final yearly profit loss. Okay, the next thing we need to do is make these roll-ups work. And in order to do that, we need to connect things. Relate, basically, the income and expenditure um, databases with the balance database. First of all, I'm gonna put a year in here. I'm gonna call it 2021. 
Uh, and I'm gonna create another one, 2022. And in fact, sort of sending, very helpful. So we're going to add in here, create a relation, and we're going to select income on the list. Okay, that's the one. Create the relation, and there it is, related to balance. Each thing needs to be linked to one of these files, yeah? So I'm just gonna call this. If I click on here and link it to the year, it will then turn up in that year, yeah? Now obviously you don't wanna do that for every single thing, but that is the joy of creating a dashboard in a moment that will help you do that. But I'm just putting those in, as you see, I've put some made up numbers for an example into the system so you see how it works. Okay, now let's do the same in expenses. So we're going to add another column up here, go to create a relation. This time select, there it is, create the relation, expense relation. And again, for example's sake, at this stage, I want to relate that expense to the same year. So you'll see, let's just give this one a description. And... So let's now calculate. So total income, I wanna click on it, the roll up, select a relation. We wanna be the income relation, so we're setting it up to that relationship. We then want the property we show to be the amount. There are all the amounts. They're all listed, it's rolling them up, fantastic. Now what you now need to do is click sum, it will add up the total. The same with outgoings, you're gonna click, select this time expenses. This is gonna be total amount of expenses. So you're gonna click amount and you're going to click sum, 10 pounds. Now I'm just gonna add another example in here and we'll call this food shop. So what we should now see is the total appears, fantastic, it adds it all up. That's total outgoings. For gross yearly profit, we first of all want to click on here and we want to make a sum. So it's essentially gonna be total income minus total outgoings. It, we need to then format it as you've done with everything else. There you go, it's worked it out. Now we need to look at these final two formulas that will complete this system. Total expenses claim. Now I told you this was a formula, I forgot. It's not, and it doesn't matter because we haven't done anything, but it's a roll up just like the other ones. But this time, what we're gonna do is select the relation as expenses, as you can see, but instead we're going to select a final expense claim because if we've adjusted the percentage claim to less than 100% of the expense, uh, because for example, we can't claim it, we need a final expense result. What will happen in this system is whatever you put into the system, unless you change the percentage, it will say all of those expenses count against your business. So you need to adjust that if you're wanting to use it. So final expense claimed and then the sum of that. Now you'll see 110 in total outgoings, 105 in claimed, and that is because 50% of the 10 down here, I've made the percentage uh, claim less. So that means that here, we can make this formula a simple formula, which is total income minus total expenses claimed. And you'll see, therefore, the income is five dollars more because we're claiming five less against the income. Brilliant. Uh, you might wanna add a view to balance here, and let's call this one historic view. Uh, and what we can do is in historic view is hide all of the formatting so that it becomes nice and clear. You will probably want to in historic view um, sort it ascending. And then the other one we can simply call system because this main database is going to become, put that at the top, uh, is going to become the way that we view the historic information. So you'll see here, we then have a nice clear view of everything in order. Close that up, and underneath this, we are going to create the dashboard. Well, if you've got this far, you've got to the really exciting bit. In the next video, we'll create the main dashboard view that allows you to filter monthly views of your income and expenses for day-to-day -day use. And I'll show you an amazing technique to create regular recurring expense and income items that you can drop in just like that. Check out my full Notion system template. You can build it, you can download it from bettercreating.com. Of course, subscribe if you're not already, and I'll see you on the next video. Thank you.